Hello guys, welcome back to another video today with ARC Exotics and in this video we're going to be doing a DIY Mantis enclosure um, you can call it what you want, tub, enclosure, tank um, yeah so we're going to be doing our own DIY Mantis setup from scratch we're going to be going out and buying everything you need and setting it all up step by step for you to follow as a tutorial and then hopefully you can go and do these yourself and everyone can have a Mantis enclosure so yeah let's get into the video but one more thing before we do start the video if you are a kid or a child watching this video make sure that everything that you are doing are you using tools sharp objects power tools saws stuff like that make sure you've got full permission and you are supervised because they can be very dangerous so this is all the stuff that you're going to need to make your own Mantis DIY tank. Now we're going to start in the top left here. This is just a home supply um, door cover. If you read here, it will just say a magnet door mesh that opens and snaps to keep the flies out of the house. Basically, for the price of it, I think it was something like two ninety nine, maybe three pound. Um, you want to use this mesh and just disregard the thick bits with the metal clips and that will be your mesh to go over the top of the tub which leads us onto the tub this is the tub it's a 1.8 litre or 87 ounce plastic food container um, i got this i'm in the uk i got this from the range so if you're in the uk then you know where to look but if not i'm sure you can pick one of these up from an american store i'm sure there's plenty of places that do them so that is the tub you'll need these two come together. This is obviously sandpaper, as you know, and once we cut the hole in here, you're going to need to sand it down. We'll use that for it, but we'll wrap this around the wood so we can go around the sides and make it a lot easier. And then we're going to come on to basically our accessories, minus the no more nails. So we've got cut up bamboo. This bamboo is from a garden centre, and we've just cut it up accordingly to the size of the tub. Here we've got no more nails, and this is the liquid gel form one, not the sticker one. Um, so basically, again, that will just be going on the underside of the lid where it's cut, and it will hold the mesh to the container. So that is a must. It's about £5, but it does do the job really well. Um, it's a good brand as well. Here are just a few offcuts of some plastic leaves. Um, again, you just take a little snippet of the bottom of your leaves that you've got in the tanks or spare ones that I've got here. Just cut them and have them into the bottom of the tank. A marker pen to mark out the circle that you're gonna be cutting for your container. Some masking tape. So when you sand it down, you don't scratch the container. And this masking tape is gonna go around here And then we've got some scissors because scissors always come in handy. Um, again, cutting mask and tape and bits and bobs like that. Cutting the mesh as well, mainly. Um, and then we've got some dirt here as well, which obviously you'll need to go into the bottom of the tank once it's complete. Now, when it comes to making a hole in here, these specific lock, lock and lock classic tubs are good because as you can see, they've already got a circle indented in them. As you can see there so i tend to follow that line and then it leaves a little bit extra here to stick the no more nails to so if we just follow that line with the marker pen and go around that the best way for most people to do it is with this little thing here this is a multi-tool so you'll basically plug it into the mains switch this little switch on and this doesn't move at all it just vibrates and when it vibrates, you apply pressure from holding it down, which then makes the crack and cut. And it will then follow it round with you guiding it all the way around here as neat as possible. Now, I'm lucky enough to have a multi-tool. Um, if you haven't got a multi-tool, which I assume most people haven't, then these are your best methods. So this is off a little tiny hacksaw. It's quite blunt, but it's just for demonstration. This is a drill piece, so this needs to go into the drill. You'll need to drill through here a couple of times. You don't want to keep doing that because it might split it. Do it a couple of times. 
obviously take the lid off then put this through there and continue to saw round into a circle but today we're going to be doing it with the multi-purpose tool because it is much easier now this isn't actually mine i've borrowed it but it is much easier for doing these once all of this is done if it will focus then you should have obviously this is a smaller size but you should have a little tub like this with bamboo mesh and everything you need in it so let's get in to step number one now the next thing you're going to want to do is put masking tape around this part here but cover this as well so when you are cutting with the tool it won't scratch it as much if you make a mistake so what we're going to need to do i'm going to show you one demonstration and then i'm just going to time lapse the rest but you just need any size bit of masking tape to be able to rip off place it over like that and just press in the crevice and as you press in the crevice you're protecting this bit when you sand it down later and you can also see the defined line if not if you haven't got this line built into the tub do it like this all the way around and just draw a line get a circle something that is like a, you know that sort of shape and go around it you'll find something in home like that you've got like this for example put on there draw around the inside you got to be creative with it when you're doing stuff like this so just continue to do that until it is all done right so now you have got the masking tape all the way around the outside like you just saw don't need to be neat it's going to come off eventually and go in the bin so it doesn't matter too much but that is done now the next step will be a marker pen now like i say if you don't already have the cut out hole or the sort of texture hole to where you need to go around be creative use something like this like i said earlier put it inside and draw around but if not take the marker pen and just draw around the hole now when i done the first one of these i didn't actually use the marker pen and me not using the marker pen uh, uh, sorry me not using the masking tape when it was cut out i then had i then had a horrible black marker pen line on it so with this ring you've got two little dips one there and one there so you've got to make sure you just keep the circle going unlock that bit there but it doesn't matter too much um, and then keep that as clean as you can but make sure you leave enough room on the inside to stick the mesh later on if not you'll only have the side bit here which might not be too much so make sure you leave enough gap now i just went and grabbed duke with duke's one here he's just chilling um he's doing well i don't know if you can see him see him there this little focus you just see his head there he's doing well um but as you can see on the top of his mesh i don't want to move it too much but he's got all marker pen mark there and it doesn't look very neat and this stain is from a wax worm that he decided to basically squeeze to death so um yeah cheers so now the outline is done and it is all masking taped up what we're going to do is move down to the shed downstairs um at the minute we've had some pretty hot weather in the uk and this room without any heat on it from the reptiles is currently 28 and a half degrees so i am sweating so we're going to move down to the garden shed and get this tool on the go so now i'm just going to basically be telling you the best way of cutting it you don't want the blade to bend inwards towards the circle, but you want it to go up and out towards the right. So you're constantly going round and not in because the blade is vibrating. It will naturally go in like that. And then you just need to keep re releasing it, putting it back in and going all the way around. You don't want to go too far to the right because you will cut through. And then as you can see here, like I say, little movement in and around. And then once that is all done, you should come out with hopefully a pretty good looking circle just like this. That will be rough around the edges, but like I say, we'll deal with that on the next part of the video. So other than that, you should have, like I said, a pretty good looking circle. So now this is done and cut out like i say it was a little tricky to film but i think i got it 
Um, and I'm pretty sure that's a, not a bad circle to be fair. But obviously this is really rough and you wouldn't want to feel how rough that is on the actual, you know, like feeling like yourself it is really, really hard. You can probably go around and snap all the plastic off but it would never come out as smooth as what you want it to. But for now, keep the tape on here because you're going to be sanding it down and you don't want to scratch the actual lid because remember, this is your setup. So you don't want to damage it. So now we're going to get into how to sand this properly. So now there is a couple of ways you can sand this. So you obviously we've got the paper here, which is what I showed you earlier. You can just hold it or if you've got a clamp at home, clamp it, but make sure you pad it either side so you don't crack the frame. And you can just go around like this. Sorry about the sound, it's horrible, but you can just keep going around like that. Now with this wood, what we mentioned earlier, this is our little secret tool. Now we can wrap this round and keep it tight like that. And push it to the end, so it's on there like that. And it gives us a bit more grip and we don't hurt our hand so much. So it's wrapped around here so you can hold the wood as a handle like that and use this side, that side, and that side. So if you need to get into the little corners, like this little bit here, you can do so. But using the wood makes it a lot easier because you can just do this. And you can just put it, this bit on the flat of it and go all the way around. Now, if you want it to look good, this is quite a long process. Don't rush it, just make sure it is good. And once all of this bit is off on the top, don't forget to flip it over because there's going to be some little bits like that at the bottom as well. So I'll get back to you when all of this is sanded and I'm probably even going to do it in a time lapse to show you how long it probably actually does take. So let's get into that. Right guys, so the time lapse was just on the previous clip. Now that was probably about 30 minutes of sanding um, and that ended up being a 30 second clip because obviously the time lapse. I then went on to sand it for probably another 15 minutes maybe. So obviously this is like a 45 minute job in total, but if you rush it then it will come out untidy and quite scruffy. So this is something that you should definitely take your time on doing and making sure it looks sort of clean and neat like an actual product. Um, so yeah, it's just a little tip for you. Right, now we've got it back upstairs. I currently have got my window open, so you might hear a bit of noise, but never mind, I'm sweating. Um, so this is it done. I just explained in the other clip, it took a little while to do. Just make sure you don't rush it. I'm now going to remove the masking tape, and you can still see some rough edges. Once this is removed, you're going to want to roughly go over it again on the little bits that you have missed because there will be bits and it doesn't mean you're not very good at it it just means the masking tape was covering them that's all so make sure you get all of them and obviously the circle is not perfect but it's acceptable it's obviously a little bit shorter on that side compared to this side but again it does the job i'm going to be working on something to make this a complete clean circle but that will be updated in another video like i say it looks pretty smooth there's little bits like there as you can see if it will focus yep but you can run your finger around it and not get it cut which is a good indicator that it is nice and smooth so we'll move on to the next step so now what we're going to do is work on the actual tub itself we're going to leave the lid over there for the time being um, with the tub obviously you get instructions somehow in case you don't know how to lock that um, but you just get well, it depends what tub you get, but this one's got little stickers on. Luckily enough, these are the sort of stickers that peel off in one go, and you don't have to pick at them for absolutely ages, because nobody likes doing that, and everybody's done that. I feel your pain. Um, and you watch this one not come off how it should do now. There we go, so now we have just a plain bog-standard tub. Nice and simple. Now, we're going to use... What I use is just topsoil for these guys, but... That has no added nutrients or anything, so it is just plain and simple dirt. It can't cause harm because 
it is just natural, it's from the world. Nothing's been added to it, it's just left. So I'm gonna use this and put this in here. You want a fairly decent layer for humidity purposes, but it doesn't matter too much. And then you just wanna give it a bit of a shake and a bit of a mix up. But about there is almost perfect actually. If I just wipe my hand. Yeah, about there is a good level. You don't need it too deep, just like that, look. Looks pretty good. Get that little bit of grass out, nice. So the next thing we're gonna move on to is the bamboo. Now, these can be cut to size. I got these from a garden center. I think I got a pack of eight of them, not this size, probably about a meter-ish. Uh, got about eight of them, I think it was three pound. And again, I use the same tool, but you can cut these however, bolt cutters or anything like that. And you just wanna prop them up like that and make them like a little sort of thing to climb up to the bottom and to the top. So it's nice and simple for him to get up and down. I'm going to quickly go and cut a few longer ones up to the top and I'll be back with you in a second. So there we go. We've added a few more sticks and, and um, bamboo, sorry. So that looks pretty decent in there. We've cut up some leaves there, chucked two lots of them in. They don't really have to be in any sort of way. Um, but obviously the important thing now is making sure that the bamboo is secured and it's not movable because obviously yes they're fragile in insects but they can still move these somehow like you'll, you'll be amazed trust me and the last thing you want is seeing your mantis trapped under these and dead so make sure they're all locked in into a secure place and that is another reason to have a deeper layer of substrate so now we have the home quality style net thing um don't worry it's not an unboxing of this <laughs> i'm just opening it up now, I have already used it, but this is the sort of net that you want, and it's nice and thin. I did already take a cutting from it from the little tank, so I'm going to try and find where I've done that and continue it. Uh, there it is, so that's the cutting I've already taken. I don't know if you, you can't really see it very well, but that is the netting. You want to make sure that the holes in it are big enough to make sure there's a decent ventilation. I've seen a lot of people use net curtain, and there's not enough holes in it, it's not enough ventilation. So as long as they're not in a drafty spot, they'll be fine with this sort of netting. So now we've got to basically, best way to get a circle out of this is to hold it against it like that, cut round it and then cut off the excess. So now, like I said, we're gonna do a bigger bit than what we'd normally need because we have plenty here and it's just much easier and there's much less clutter. So we're just gonna cut hopefully <laughs> cut across here and then we can get rid of this and it's out of the way now it leads us with this little bit here and then what we're going to do have that on there like that even though it's going on the inside you want to leave room past the actual cut so you can stick it to the inside so make sure you do it this way and have this going over and then cut as neatly as you can round the actual outside of the container lid itself and you should end up with something a bit like this. Here we go. So this is basically the net. Obviously, it's not completely neat. There's a little bit sticking out there. But it doesn't have to be perfect. You can always trim it again once it's glued and secured. So now, this is going to be a tricky bit. What we're going to do, have the net overlapping the lid. We're going to have no more nails ran through the underside of the lid of what you've got left of it. That part all the way around it we're going to place the net over it and push in with our oh i keep going off camera i'm going to push in with our index finger going all the way around and it should stick it doesn't always stick but then we're going to get a bit more and stick it through the net to double secure it so let's have a go now when you do this you want a cloth or a rag on hand just because it does stick to your fingers you need to be careful so we're going to get a little bit of this out if it's not stuck on the seal, there we go. And squeeze it onto our finger and simply run it round the outside like that. Just keep running it all the way around the outside as much as you can. When you've got excess, scrape it off with your finger and keep going like that. And then just do this all the way around the container until you feel 
like it's covered to a good amount. Don't be scared to use too much because it will just harden up and flake off if not. So you just want to keep doing that. And like I say, try and if you can, get it on the underside of the lid and not the actual side, do you know what I mean, of the container. Get it on the actual underside of the lid itself. But this is a little bit tricky and it's even trickier to try and do it in front of camera. So excuse me if it's a bit wonky, but it will have to make do for now. Just keep continuing to do it. So I do just keep talking, but... I want to run you through the whole process of this because I always watch tutorials and when they skip to next parts and that really annoys me because I like seeing exactly how they do it. So this is going to be an exact tutorial, it might even be the title, <laughs> we'll have to see. But you want to do it in a decently sort of quick manner because this stuff um, soon dries up and like I say once you feel that there's a good amount on there Wipe your fingers quickly before it dries up onto your fingers. Get the net. Now, this is the part that really annoys me. Have it overlapping and just push around it as much as you can. Run your finger around the net and try not to create any slack on the net. And this bit is really fiddly and I'm not good at fiddly stuff. So it does annoy me quite a lot. Sometimes it's better to use scissors like you can see me doing because I'm a clout and my fingers are just like just anything like I can't really use them. I'm a bit of an idiot. And just try and stick it round onto here. Now at first it will look like you've sort of failed and it's not stuck very well. But we'll save that later because when I first done this I was quite disappointed and then I ended up saving it. And since then I've done exactly that all the time. So once it's like that, you want to leave it to dry for a little bit. And once it's left to dry, we're then going to go around later on with another bit on the inside to double secure it. So we'll get back to you when it is all dried up. So now it's a little bit dry, what we're going to do is squeeze it onto our finger again. And you don't want to put sort of, as soon as you put it on, it will clump up. So you want to push it in and run it round. Now you've got to bear in mind you can't get too much of this on the actual mesh itself but a little bit will not hurt because it will just dry up. Now you want to keep doing this and this is the bit that I do dislike the most because I feel like this is where it all goes downhill but you want to make sure you just take your time with it and don't rush it. Like I say you've already actually secured it in place now what you're doing is just double securing it in place and obviously the more of the lid you actually leave then the more you can run your finger across making it much easier there is on this bit here i've not left much lid which makes it quite tricky but we're just going to keep going and see how it goes because i've done all the rest of the video now but like i say that is an important part when you are cutting it make sure you do leave a good amount of the lid showing. I keep going further and further off camera. And then just push it round and go all the way round. Just keep doing that until it's all done, until you meet up to where you started again. And then just sort of push it on there, leave it on there and push round the outside. And just keep going and going and going. Now you might have a tiny little bit of slack, but the more that is stuck down, then the better that will sort of not show. So you just want to keep doing that as much as you can. I feel like I'm going off camera again, I just keep moving it. And then just use your finger very gently to wedge it in the gap. And hopefully it will come out decent. Now if you don't see no clip after this, means I've probably aborted the video and you're never ever going to see it but if you're watching this already then it means I've uploaded it so that's a good sign but at this point I don't really know if I'm going to because the lid's normally 
are quite straightforward, but this one's proven to be a little tricky. And I'm going off camera again. Right, so now that is done, all you're gonna have to do again is wait to leave it to dry. Sometimes it's better to put the actual container lid on the actual container, so it sort of pushes it into place. And then we'll have a look when it is all dried up. So before we have a look at it, before it all dries up, what we're gonna show you is just a little close up of how you want it to look. Yes, it will look messy, but this can all be sort of squared away and evened up once it is all dried up and into place. And other than that, that is the... So guys, that is basically the video as it is. Um, now I was looking at the lids and I was thinking how I could do it better. And I thought that maybe the no more nails isn't the best option because it's not a transparent um, liquid. Like, you know, you, you can see it. And if you obviously go over, then you can then see it on the mesh, which doesn't look as neat. Um, this is the finished product here. I think it looks pretty good. Again, you can see just little bits there of white, which makes it look untidy and not professional because it's not, but it just makes it look sort of sloppy. Um, the other two have actually come out fine, which surprised me. The only one I film and it comes out rubbish. This is the smaller one and that looks pretty good. Um, and the other one, which Duke the Manus is in, is also fine. So it's just that one, the one I film a video on, funnily enough. Um, so I think the best way to maybe get round this is if you guys want to do it yourself, then you can either use the No More Nails or maybe a hot glue gun would be better. But obviously be safe, be careful when you're using it. Uh, make sure you're supervised if you're younger watching this as well. But obviously that is also another method, um, a hot glue gun. And obviously then you can push it and tuck it around the inside with a stick maybe or like, you know something like that. Um, but maybe that will come out better and maybe we might have to try it ourselves. So I think I'm going to go out and get a hot glue gun um, and see how that looks. But I was pretty sort of, not disappointed, but filmed the whole video in the process and I feel like the lid's not come out as good as I thought. But if you want to do it yourself, it still looks pretty, pretty presentable. Like it's, it's just up close. You see the sort of tattiness of it, as you can see there, look. But like this... When it's on a, on a rack system, like on a, you know, on a unit, and there's four or five of them, you don't really notice it. But, again, it's a DIY job. It's not going to be absolutely perfect. It depends how fussy, fussy you are, really. If you're really fussy and, you know, then you're better off going somewhere and buying a, a jar, which is £30, and it's got the smallest, most pointless LED lighting. Um, and it obviously takes up a plug as well, which when you've got a reptile room, you don't need that. So, but it all depends, you know, I'm, I'm not criticising that. It is better, it's easier, but obviously it's more expensive. And this channel is about showing you how to do things like cost effective, easy and simple. And this is hopefully what that video will show you. If you want to go out and do that now, you can, you know, exactly how you've got to do it. So, yeah. Now, these are the three jars in question. The one on this side here has Duke the Giant Asian Mantis in. And again, other than the stain that he actually left on it from the wax worm, you can't see much of the no more nails. Again, little bits, but this is why I said about the mask and tape, because that tidies it up on the outside there, compared to not having the mask and tape, leaving it all scratched like that, which doesn't look very good. But this is the first one I've done, so that looked pretty good for the first attempt. And I didn't copy this idea off anyone, I just sort of tried to do it myself. So obviously that is the larger one. And then you've got the little baby small one here, which to be fair, come out pretty neat to be fair, I think. The, the net looks quite good. The circle's quite good. So that is the little baby one. And then the other big one that we've done today as well. So that is the three of them. Um, and you guys will have to let me know what you think. But other than that, that basically covers the how to set up a mantis enclosure or tub whatever you want to call it really that basically covers that video let me know what you think if i should continue to do these with white mesh like that which are a bit more see-through or black mesh you have to let me know um this mesh is quite fine as well so we'll have to see 
But yeah, thank you for watching this video on how to do this. And hopefully you're going to go off and do it yourself. And if you do do it yourself, go over to Instagram, ARC Exotics, and let me know what you think of it and send me a photo of your design yourself. You might do things a bit different. You might have something different instead of bamboo. Um, you might do, you know, anything. Just if you if you do one, then inbox me your final finished products and I'll have a little look at them and see if they can help me do mine any better. Now that is today's video done and dusted. I just put all of that into iMovie and it come up at 30 minutes long. So I am sorry, it was a bit of a long video. If I am rambling on, don't feel like you have to watch it all. Skip to what you need to see and crack on with it. But thank you for watching the video. I really appreciate it. And like I say, hopefully it has helped you out and hopefully you're gonna have a madness in a little setup like that and it will live a happy long life. So covered everything like I just said. Thank you for watching the video and tune in for another one next week with ASC Exotics. Thanks for watching.